quiet, picturesque, and far removed of the key words here. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point narrated video tours about resorts and flights all over the world. This is my video number 103 and today we're at the Samsara Ubud, tucked away just north of the city. Stick around for the full tour of this hidden boutique resort. Welcome to somewhere north of Ubud. Prior to this trip, I hadn't visited Ubud on any of my Bali trips and wasn't all that familiar with the distances and the layouts of the area. When hotel staff at other hotels would ask me about my itinerary, every time I mentioned Samsara, it would result in, oh, that's far, or, oh, it's so quiet there, which is just a really nice way of saying, oh, that's far. So yes, we are truly reconnecting with nature on this one. If you'd like to know more about the rate that I paid and my next five videos in queue for release, please check out the description below. As we walk through the open air lobby, let me touch on one point that surprised me a bit. The Samsara presents itself as a polished and well-loved resort, designed to provide a truly Balinese experience. This is all true, but I do need to make clear just from the jump here that this is a really small resort. Of course, I do a lot of researching when choosing hotels to visit, but if I'm honest, I usually try to not dive too deep because I want to experience it as any other traveler would. So while logically I knew the resort, which opened in 2017, only had 17 villas, and I knew what the resort looked like in photos, in reality it just felt a bit smaller. Built in steep terraced rows, the property has just a lot less wandering around space than let's say a 17 villa property that's all laid out on one level, which I suppose is why terraced farming is so efficient. One thing that isn't feeling too efficient right now though is this introduction. So let me very briefly ask you to click the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video so that you can check out my three new videos coming out each week. Clicking on one of those buttons or providing feedback in the comments really does help the channel grow and create more and better content for you in the future. Of course, my Patreon is also linked in the description. A big thank you in advance. Let's take a closer look at the area. Ubud, sitting at the base of the northern Balinese volcanoes, is around a 90 minute drive from the international airport to the south. To access the Samsara, you'll be passing through Ubud and driving an additional 20 to 30 minutes north, far removed from the touristy town center. With just a few exceptions, the resort is laid out with four villas to a row, and I'll point out now that the majority of the villas are in fact attached to their neighbor. Also, the reception structure that you just saw already also cascades down into the valley. On the top, we have the reception area, below that, the restaurant, then the pool, then the spa, and then the fitness center and the garden courtyard. Granted, during my stay it was overcast for the majority of the time, but with I believe more than 50% occupancy during my stay, this pool area was just never really used, considering that every room has their own private pool with the exact same loungers. That brings me to the point to make about the use of space. This is an area that I could be completely wrong about, but I just get the feeling that the space could have been used in a much better way throughout the resort's common areas. I'm not a hotel designer, I'm not going to pretend like I know the answer, but so much of the usable space on this steep plot is taken up by this big old pool that at its busiest can seat eight guests.
All right, on to the villa. For my stay, I was on the second lowest row of villas in number 11. My villa more specifically was a one bedroom pool villa. There are other similar layouts with more premium valley views, as well as two bedroom duplex villas, of which there are three in the top row. Inside, the villas are nicely laid out with a decor that is calming and classic, if not a bit generic feeling. As you can see on the wall next to the beds, there's a tasteful use of their logo, the modified infinity loop, which is also detailed in the bathroom. I give them credit for integrating it into the design well. Some small resorts in Southeast Asia go a wee bit over the top with their branding. Let me talk about the bedding for a moment as we take a look at the bed and move to the mini bar and desk area. This was a strange one for me. The pillows were like true inflated balloons. I'm not trying to say that in a clever way or as an exaggeration. When you pick up the pillow, it feels more or less normal. But when you put pressure on it, the air is trapped inside and it feels like you're resting your head on a balloon. And it woke me up more times than I care to mention throughout the night. I feel like a genuine moron for not doing this until I was about to check out. But if you visit and you feel the same thing, take the pillow out of the pillowcase and slightly unzip the pillow protector. For whatever reason, the pillow protectors were some sort of airtight and probably more importantly, watertight latex. And when it's zipped shut provides for a very strange experience that I, at least, have never encountered before. The mini bar is sparsely stocked with some teas and unbranded coffee to use in the French press. Not my favorite style to find, but at least the coffee was ground correctly for the French press. Being a newer hotel, there is plenty of connectivity throughout with some convenient universal outlets as well. Onto the bathroom, which had a nice open floor plan and with the doors open added to the feeling of space in the bedroom. Glass bottle purified water was provided in the rooms and while there was nothing wrong with the water, it was in these tiny 250 mil shrink sealed bottles, which were just a bit of an annoyance to keep opening. The attached open plan wardrobe is a great use of the corner space and has plenty of room for everything that you'll be bringing. The bathtub seems a little bit awkwardly placed, but it's a nice size and very deep. And it's just next to the indoor shower featuring unbranded products in reusable containers. Just outside, there's also a very nice refreshing shower as well. If I could change one small thing about the entire villa, it would have to be to have a small shelf out here so that you don't need to put the soaps on the ground. Outside, we have the beautiful private pool, which was a great place to end the day considering that it was also heated. Don't let the overcast skies get you down though. The sun is always bound to come out, and when it does, the entire resort starts to steam dry. The evening came and it was time to head to dinner. Two notes about accessibility. First off, they're very happy to take you around on a buggy if you're unable to deal with the stairs or the steep drives yourself. 
Second thing, the lighting is very spotty at night. Some areas are well lit, and some unfortunate stairs are not. Take care. There is, as you can guess, just one restaurant, which is obviously enough. The menu I'm showing you is their full standard menu. Note that during my stay, I do believe that it was a little bit smaller, as can be expected as occupancy rates continue to recover. The restaurant is nicely laid out, with a variety of seating options to please just about everyone. With a 50-seat restaurant in a 17-room hotel, surely there's never going to be a wait. Now onto something that I feel a little bit bad for faulting them for, but at the end of the day, it's just my true opinion. I think they're trying too hard with their food program. I think you can get that feeling just by looking at the menu. My starter was the best thing that I had for dinner or for breakfast, my go-to Indonesian salad, gado gado. And I think it speaks volumes that the most authentic and basic Indonesian dish that I had was also the best. Next up for the main, I had a chicken satay. When I ordered it, I was told that it wasn't a traditional satay and would use chicken breast and didn't come with normal rice. Okay, no problem. Let's see what comes. The flavors were okay, but when I'm at a small boutique retreat in the middle of the jungle in Indonesia, I don't really need crispy rice soil, tournée carrots, or a peanut emulsion. Just give me the authentic flavors and stop trying to make it fancy. Don't get me wrong though, it was still tasty, just not the style of food that I was expecting or hoping for. The next morning, Mother Nature was in a show-off-y kind of mood and was changing the weather just about every other minute. While waiting for breakfast to open, I headed down to the lowest level where there's an open lawn as well as an empty event space, both flooded with the sound of the nearby waterfalls below. Breakfast was a la carte and falls into the same category as dinner last night. If I wanted Eggs Benedict, I was getting a baby lobster as well. The French toast, somewhat ironically, was grilled and had the charcoal flavor that I was missing from my satay the night before. I give them credit though as the grilled flavor with the strawberries inside was actually pretty good. If you care to work off some of your baby lobsters, there's also a decently equipped fitness room on the lowest level. So, what are we thinking? It was very nice, the service was pleasant, the food was tasty, but if I was choosing a resort for my own holiday, I'd probably opt for a larger secluded resort or a smaller boutique resort that is in a more centrally located area. For the price though, it's still a great option if you really do want to feel far away from it all. On to the flip-flop score. Feel free to pause to take a closer look. If you enjoyed this video, gave it a thumbs up, or subscribe because of this video, many thanks for that, and I hope to see you next time for the last of my nine-part Bali series at the Conrad Bali Nusa Dua.